Hey everyone, it's Morgan and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be making little swatches of every single marker that I own. This is something that really needed to be done because my last paper that I used for like comparing my colors to, it is really old and I made it really unorganized. So I've been staring at this just like, oh my God, I need to reorganize and here we go. So the majority of the markers I use in this video are Copic markers, but later on in the video I do start swatching some of my other markers because if you can, you could see in my case, I have mostly Copic markers, but then I also have a lot of Prismacolor and Blick Studio markers because um, I used to be on a budget and I kind of still am, so. <laughs> <laughs> While in the case they might not seem like there's that many of them, I actually do have quite a bit of markers and you'll be able to see that once I finish these swatches. But um, my marker case is pretty big, just in case I ever, I don't know, greatly expand my collection. But my case makes it look like I have only a few markers, but I promise you, I don't. I've been working on this collection for years and years and years. I really think the first time I got Copic markers was in like 2000, I want to say like 2013 or something like that. I was really young too, I know that. My collection started with like these two smaller sets and then every year on I would just keep asking for more Copic markers for like my birthday, for Christmas, because when I first started using Copic markers, I was like amazed. I thought it was insane. It was just like, I, it was like I was printing out a picture of something. That's how even the colors looked to me. I was absolutely like mesmerized by these markers. So since I, since I did start young, I was like totally obsessed with them. I'm like, oh, when can I get more Copic markers? And my mom's like, um, next holiday because they're expensive. <laughs> so we're going to journey through like a little timeline right now. So like I said, back in like 2013, we're going to go with, I got my first two cases of Copic markers and I'm pretty sure they were both two cases of 12 markers. Because for people who don't know, Copic markers come in all different kinds of size sets but you can also buy them individually off of websites or something like that. Or you can buy like little sets, like three markers at a time. But I got two of the 12 marker sets. And then I also got their skin set, which might have like eight markers in it or something. It's seriously just called like the skin pack. And I was like, oh, that's convenient. I'll take that one. And then since then, I've just been expanding and expanding. But when I was younger, I didn't really know what my preference of markers were. So I ended up buying a lot of the original Copics, which are those square ones. And I'm actually not the biggest fan of them because they don't have a brush tip on the other end. They have a, um, a chisel nib and a bullet nib. And neither of those are very helpful. <laughs> and then to add on to my bad decisions, I decided that if I asked for a different brand of marker, I could get more of them because they were less expensive. So, Little me went a little crazy and I bought a bunch of markers and I was super happy because I got all these new colors. But once again, I bought a bunch of markers that don't have brush nibs. So I kind of like screwed future me over, but it's all right because we can manage with the bullet nib. It just takes a whole lot longer. Anybody that like has experienced this struggle knows exactly what I mean because the bullet nib is so much smaller than the brush nib and it's so much less d diverse. There's, you can do so many more things with the brush nib. It's just so much better all around. And when you get a new marker and you realize you got no brush nib, it's just like, oh crap. <laughs> so eventually little me realized that the brush nib was gonna be my Lord and savior for quite a while. And I started buying actual good markers. Although don't get me wrong, all these markers are good. I still use every single one of them all the time. Cause say that I am drawing something and I really, really need this one color, but I only have it in a Prismacolor marker. Obviously I'm gonna use the Prismacolor marker. Just because there's no brush nib doesn't mean it's gonna like sacrifice my whole piece. It's just annoying and not something I wanna do. The next piece in my story is me ordering a bunch of chow markers in like sets of three. Cause the, then that's what I ended up doing. Cause a couple years passed, I hadn't asked for Copic markers in a little while because I kind of like got off the Copic trend and more into like the Prismacolor pencil trend. And I, yeah, I still like both of these materials so much, but just recently I've been like looking at my Copic markers again and I'm like, mm, you know, I don't use these enough. Like what happened to all the good times? Cause I'm not kidding you. I used to use my Copic markers like six times a day. Like I would only do that. I would just draw so many like cartoon things and I would just like smother my pages in Copic markers. I was totally in love with them. And I don't get me wrong. Again, I totally still am, but at least I've grown up a little bit. <laughs> so then I started buying chow markers and the chow markers are the skinny markers that are circular. They also have sketch markers, which are the same two, two nibs as the chow markers. They're just bigger markers, so they're a little more expensive. So then, smart little me, we're now we're getting up there in the brain world. 
<laughs> I, I started getting child markers instead, which was finally the right decision. And now I am very happy with all the child markers I bought. But the only problem is, since my timeline is so long, all my old markers just started dying and now I'm really sad. Because they're all like, you can tell which of my markers are new and which are old because like using them, you can just totally tell the quality difference between them. I can be like, yep, these have been sitting here for like five years. <laughs> and then I can be like, oh yeah, I bought this two years ago. <laughs> but as you can hear, I'm saying years, which means that Copic markers have a really good shelf life and they are definitely a product that's made to last. So if you're happening to watch this video and you don't really know much about Copic markers, I really recommend them. They were like a whole new open door into a new world for me. And I think it would be great for anyone else to experience that too. I was just so happy to finally get this done because like I said, my chart, my old chart was a monstrosity. It was this gigantic piece of white paper that had like every color I had just scribbled around in random like blotches. And I like, I did label them at least, but I didn't know which of those markers have died since then because that chart was so unreliable. I would always find the perfect color, be super happy. And then I couldn't find the marker anywhere because I threw it out. <laughs> I never like kept track of which ones I threw out, which ones died. And that kind of, you know, got me. <laughs> and when I was drawing something else and the marker I needed was nowhere to be found because I probably threw it out two years ago. <laughs> so my updated chart makes me a whole lot happier and it's a lot neater, a lot, a lot neater. Makes my OCD very happy. <laughs> and I actually kind of hope it made your OCD happy too because I love watching videos like this where things just like, are really quickly put into a line or like speed paints even too are so satisfying to watch so if you got any satisfaction out of this you know just let me know <laughs> this is so weird you know we're just gonna label this as a very chill video because for me it's a saturday afternoon i'm chilling on my pjs recording this right now and i'm pretty sure it was a chill day when i recorded that video <laughs> that video when i recorded this video <laughs> too <laughs> So thank you guys so much for sitting through my totally boring story and my very chill video because I was, it's good talking to you guys like a normal person instead of like, oh, I gotta use all these specific art terms. Like, no, we're gonna just talk. So, so thank you guys so much for watching and I really hope to see you in the next video. Bye.